the liturgical year of Dom Prosper Garanger, January 22nd, Saints Vincent and Anastasius, martyrs. Saint Vincent, deacon and martyr. Vincent, the victorious, vested in the sacred dalmatic and holding his palm in his hand, comes today to his Jesus' crib, and right welcome is he to Stephen the Crown, his leader and his brother. Spain is his country. He is a deacon of the glorious Church of Saragossa, and by the strength and warmth of his faith, he is a type of that land which is, by excellence, the Catholic Kingdom. But he does not belong to Spain only. Like Stephen, and like Lawrence, Vincent is the favorite and hero of the whole church. Stephen the deacon preached the divinity of Jesus amidst the shower of stones which were hurled upon him as a blasphemer. Vincent the deacon confessed his faith in Jesus upon his red-hot gridiron, as did that other deacon Lawrence. This triumvirate of martyr deacons cluster together in the sacred lineage, and when we hear their three grand names, the crown, the laurel, and the conqueror, we hail them as the three bravest knights of our most dear Lord. Vincent triumphed over the torture of fire because the flame of divine love which burned within his soul was keener than that which scorched his body. He was comforted in the most miraculous manner during his great sufferings, but God worked those prodigies not to deprive Vincent of his crown, but to show his own power. The holy deacon had but one thought in the midst of all his pains. He was ambitious to make a return by the gift of his own life for that sacrifice whereby his divine master had died for him and for all men. And now that so generous a lover of God should be at the crib of this same Jesus is not, it is, it is not, it is, is it not, is it not right and just? Oh, how he urges us every Christmas to love this divine infant. He that hesitated not when called on to give himself to his Lord, even though it was to cost him such cruel pains, what cowards would he not call us who can come so many Christmases to Bethlehem and have nothing to give but cold and divided hearts? His sacrifice was to be burnt alive and torn and cut, and he smiled as he gave it. What are we to say of ourselves, who take years to think before we will give up those childish things which prevent us from ever seriously beginning a new life with our newborn Jesus? Would that the sight of all these martyrs in whose company the church has made us live during these few last days would touch our hearts and make them resolute and simple? There is an ancient Christian tradition which makes St. Vincent the patron of vineyards and laborers in vineyards. This was no doubt suggested by the saints having held the office of deacon, for the deacon has to pour the wine into the chalice during the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and that wine is to be changed into the blood of Christ. A few days ago, we assisted at the mystery of the Feast of Cana. Jesus then offered us the sacred cup, the wine of his love. Today again, he offers it to us by the hand of his martyr Vincent. To make himself worthy of his high office, the holy deacon mingled his own blood as a generous wine in the cup that holds the price of the world's salvation. It is thus that we are to understand that expression of St. Paul, which says that the saints fill up in the flesh by the merit of their sufferings those things that are wanting, not in their efficacy, but in their fullness of the sufferings of Christ, whose members the saints are. We will now give the abridged account of the martyrdom of St. Vincent, as it is related in the lessons of his feast. Vincent was born at Huesca, a town in northern Spain, and when quite a child, applied himself to study. He was taught the sacred sciences by Valerius, the bishop of Saragossa. This prelate entrusted him with the duty of preaching the gospel on account of himself not being able to discharge that office by reason of an impediment in his speech. This having reached the ears of Dacian, who had been made governor of that province by Diocletian and Maximian, Vincent was apprehended at Saragossa and was led in chains to Valencia before the judgment scene of Dacian. There he was tortured by lashes and the rack in the presence of many people, but neither the violence of the torments nor the harsh or bland speeches addressed to him could induce him to swerve from his resolution. He was taught the sacred sciences by Valerius, the bishop of Saragossa. 
This prelate entrusted him with the duty of preaching the gospel on account of himself not being able to discharge that office by reason of an impediment in his speech. This having reached the ears of Dacian, who had been made governor of that province by Diocletian and Maximian, Vincent was apprehended at Saragossa and was led in chains to Valencia before the judgment seat of Dacian. He was therefore laid on a gridiron, which was set upon burning coals. His flesh was torn off with iron hooks, and red-hot plates were laid over him. After this, he was led back to prison, the floor of which had been strewed with broken potsherds, in order that when he lay down to sleep, his body might be tortured by their sharp edges. But whilst he was shut up in this dark prison, a most bright light penetrated the place. They who were present were astonished beyond measure, and the jailer informed Dacian of what had occurred. Vincent was then ordered to be taken out of prison and put on a soft bed, for the governor thought to gain over by such comforts as this him whom he had failed to seduce by tortures. But Vincent's invincible spirit, strengthened by its faith and hope in Christ Jesus, overcame all their efforts, and, after triumphing over fire and sword and all his tortures, took his flight to heaven, there to receive the crown of martyrdom on the 11th of the Calends of February, January 22nd. His body was thrown on a marsh and denied burial, but a crow miraculously defended it by its claws, beak, and wings against birds of prey and a wolf. Dacian, hearing this, ordered it to be thrown into the deep part of the sea, but by a fresh prodigy, it was washed to the shore and the Christians gave it burial. The Gothic Church of Spain, in her Mozarabic liturgy, is magnificent in her praises of St. Vincent. The first and second of the following prayers are taken from the breviary. The third is from the Missal of that rite. O God, who didst wonderfully with manifold sufferings, crown thy servant Vincent, and didst deliver him from the effects of his torments, to the end, that he might gloriously trample upon each cruel punishment with those feet of his, that had never trod in the mire of ice, who didst moreover save him from the deep waters to the end, that he, whose spirit had despised the world, might be near to his heritage in heaven. Grant unto us by the prayers of this so great a martyr, that we may never be defiled by the mire of sin, nor be plunged into the deep pool of despair, but may be presented to thee on the day of judgment, beatified with a spotless freedom of conscience. Amen. We bless thee, O Almighty God, for that thou didst deliver thy most blessed martyr Vincent, as heretofore the three children, from the flames of fire. For when his body was laid on the fire, it burned, but could not conquer him. Hear his prayers for us, and pour into our innermost spirit the dew of thy mercy, that so the fire of our carnal passions, being slacked, the flame of sin that is within us may smolder. And though by nature it ceased not to molest us, Permit not, we beseech thee, that our weakness, while passing through the fire, should ever be burnt, but grant that grace may in such manner assist nature, as that we may be able to quench by thy gift what originated without us. Amen. O Jesus, by whose great power the body of thy martyr Vincent, which the mad fury of Dacian had cast into the sea, was borne to the shore on the bosom of the waves, that it might receive honor from man. Do thou by this thy martyrs praying for us, stretch out thy hand of pity, and raise us from the stormy sea of this world to the heavenly country above, that thus we, who were driven by the impulse of the enemy to burden ourselves with guilt and so fall into the gulf, may at length by charity, which covereth sin, arrive at the port of salvation and rejoice in the company of all these, who out of love for thee, are assembled on this feast of thy martyr. Amen. We regret being obliged to content ourselves with a few stanzas of the magnificent hymn composed by Prudentius in honor of St. Vincent. The Ambrosian Breviary has selected several verses of this long poem for one of its hymns, and these we offer to our readers. O blessed martyr, bless this day of thy feast, whereon the crown was given to thee, the conqueror, and thou didst purchase it by thy blood. This is the day which took thee from this dark world to heaven, and restored thee in triumph to Christ, for thou hadst conquered thy torture and thy judge. Fellow now of the angels, 
thou shinest in thy bright stole, which thou didst wash in the stream of thy blood, for thou wast the invincible witness of Christ. Thou wast the Levite of the holy tribe, a minister of God's altar, which is surrounded by its seven snow-white pillars, and by thy noble triumph thou art a martyr of Christ. Thou alone, O doubly noble, didst bear away the palms of a double victory, and wreathe two laurels for thy brow. Conqueror once, in the hard death thou didst endure, and then after death thou wast conqueror over the tyrant thief, and with thy body alone didst gloriously defend him. O oh, by thy chains and fires and hooks, by thy prison chains, by the potsherds strewed to enhance thy glory, assist us now and hear the humble prayers of thy suppliants, and make intercession for us sinners at the throne of God. To God the Father, and to his only Son, and to the Holy Paraclete, be glory now and for all ages. Amen. Adam of St. Victor composed two sequences in honor of the great deacon of Saragossa. We consider it a duty to insert them both, for they are very beautiful. The first sequence. Lo, the wished for day is come, the happy, dear, and joyous day. Let us honor this day and admire in Vincent the combats of Christ. Vincent was great by birth and faith and piety and wisdom and preaching and dignity and office. He held the position of deacon under the command of his father Valerius. The bishop could not speak, so served his God in quiet and gives to the Levite the office of the word. On his lips was the word of truth and in his simple soul the gracefulness of a twofold science. For whilst by the help of grace he instructs the people of Saragossa in the faith, their rages against the church, the envious tyranny of the governor, and idolatrous zealot. He had heard of Valerius and his deacon and how boldly they taught the faith. He orders both to be put in chains and led to Valencia. To such a wretch as he, what was the flower of Vincent's age or the gray locks of the saintly bishop? Worn, cut by the journey, and galled by their iron chains, he confines them in a dark dungeon, denying them food and drink. He does all he can, though not all he would, to give his captives pain. They are dear to Christ, and he provides them food. The governor sends the venerable bishop into exile, keeping the young deacon for a sharper test. At first, he is put on the rack, then torn with hooks, and then, with twice a braver heart, mounts the iron bed. His flesh is grilled, but his heart is staunch. Louder than ever, he confesses Christ, and heeds not the tyrant who stands looking on. The monster's eyes flash with fire. His tongue is dumb, his hand is palsied, and himself wild with a maddened heart. He bids them throw the martyr into a prison, strewed with sharp potsherds, which will cut him as he stands or sleeps. But here he visits a bright light and is visited by angels. At last, he is laid upon a bed. His victorious and triumphant soul thus takes its flight to heaven and is presented to its Lord. The wicked tyrant refuses to the martyr's body a common rite of burial, thus trampling on both law and nature. He wreaks his anger on the dead, but only to increase the martyr's praise and beasts of prey approach, but fear to touch the holy corpse. For lo, a crow protects the unburied saint, and thus is foiled the wicked tyrant's scheme. Then Dacian, finding that he cannot destroy the holy remains on land, has them thrown into the silent grave of the deep sea. But neither does the huge stone weigh them down, nor will the sea retain them. And now the church studies how to honor Vincent with special praise, and the faithful, with one accord, join her in her hymns. This body, which was scorched by fire, is honored both on sea and land, O Jesus, mercifully grant that together with thy saints, we too may worthily praise thee in our heavenly home. Amen. The second sequence. The day of triumph has dawned, the honored day that brings us the deacon's feast. Therefore, let us all be glad and venerate our Vincent victorious in Christ. He is called Vincent, and he proves that his name was prophetic of his deeds, vanquishing on land and vanquishing on sea, every insult, pain, and fear. He is clad as with a twice-dyed crimson robe. He shines as a hyacinth. His loins are girt with purity twice pure. He wears a deacon's linen stole 
and he seeks the martyr's palm, bearing for Christ, and with unflinching heart, the pangs of cruel torture. He is the well morrowed victim, and the lamb whose fleece is dyed with scarlet to cover the tabernacle. He sows in holy tears and reaps the sheaf of life, earned by the sweat of his blood. The servant of God is hurried to the blood-stained court of a cruel Dacian, who tempts the saint, first by entreaty, then by threat, and then by offers of worldly pomps. The soldier of Christ spurns the proposal of the haughty tyrant, his world flower, his gifts, his coaxings, and his threats, for this Dorak. But while he tortures more, more tortured is the tyrant by his slightest pride. The crackling flame, the fiery bed, the cutting whips, the salt rubbed deep within his gaping wounds, burn indeed and torture but conquer not the laughing combatant of Christ. The sharp potsherds of his prison floor cut and tear his flesh, but joy imparting ease and unction is sent to him by God. His chains become his ornament, his gloomy prison a glittering hall, and the cruel potsherds soft sweet flowers. He is laid on a soft couch, panting to ascend, and surrounded by a tuneful choir of angels, his spirit soars to heaven. His body is thrown to the beasts of prey. A faithful guard protects. It is cast into the sea. The waves convey it to the shore. Welcomed by mankind, he receives the loving veneration of a world. Thus did the elements, sea and earth, and air and fire celebrate his victory. O admirable witness of the truth, pray for us to Christ, that he cleanse us from our sins and bring us purified to the heavenly joys to sing with thee, companions in thy bliss, our ceaseless Alleluia. Hail, victorious deacon, how beautiful art thou with the chalice of salvation in thy brave hands. It was thine office to offer it at the altar in order that the wine it contained might be changed by the sacred words into the blood of Christ. And when the mystery was accomplished, thou hadst to take this same chalice and present it to the faithful to the end that they who thirsted after their God might drink at the source of eternal life. But on this day thou offers it thyself to Jesus, and it is full to the brim with thine own blood. O oh, how faithful a deacon, given even thy very life and testimony to the mysteries of which thou wast the dispenser. Three centuries had elapsed since Stephen's sacrifice. Sixty years had gone by since the sweet incense of Lawrence's martyrdom had ascended to the throne of God. And now it is the last persecution. Peace is dawning on the church. And a third deacon comes to prove that time had not impaired the order. It was the deacon of Saragossa, thyself, dear saint. Bright is thy name in the list of martyrs, O Vincent, and the church is proud of thy triumph. It was for the church after Jesus that thou didst combat. Have pity on us, therefore, and signalize this day of thy feast by showing us the effects of thy protection. Thou art face to face with the King of Ages, whose battle thou didst fight on earth, and thou gazest with a loving yet dazzled eye on his eternal beauty. We also, we who are in this valley of tears, possess him and see him, for he calls himself our Emmanuel, God with us. But it is under the form of a weak babe that he shows himself to us, for he fears to overpower us with the splendor of his majesty. Pray for us, O holy martyr Vincent, for at times we tremble at the thought that this sweet Jesus is one day to be our judge. When we reflect on what thou didst and sufferest for him, we have scarcely courage to think upon ourselves for what good works can we show? Or who can say of us that we were ever warm in defending the cause of our divine master? Oh, that thy feast might shame us into the earnest, uncalculating simplicity which this sweet babe of Bethlehem is come to teach us, the simplicity which springs from humility and confidence in God, and which made thee go through all thy martyrdom with a brave, but oh, with such a calm spirit. Pray for us, that we may at length obey the God who teaches us by his own example, and with hearts ambitious for naught but the pleasing him, accomplish his will, whatever that may ask of us. And all this with the calm cheerfulness of devoted service. Pray, Vincent, for all Christians, for all are called to fight against the world and their own passions. We are all invited to a palm, a crown of victory. Jesus will admit none but conquerors to the banquet of eternal glory, 
where he has promised to drink with us the new wine in the kingdom of his father. The wedding garment, which all must have on, who enter there, must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. We must all be martyrs, at least in heart, for we have all to triumph over self, and that is the harshest of tyrants. Fly to the assistance of the martyrs who, in distant countries, are dying for the true faith. Obtain for them such courage that they may be the Vincents of our age. Protect Spain, thy country. Beseech our Emmanuel to send her heroes of thy stamp. That so, the Catholic kingdom, which has ever been so jealous of purity of faith, may speedily triumph over the trials, which are at present heavy upon her. Shall the illustrious Church of Saragossa, founded by St. James the Apostle, visited by the Blessed Mother of God, and sanctified by the ministry of thy deaconship, shall such a country as this ever grow indifferent about faith, or suffer the bond of unity to be broken? And since the devotion of the Christian people looks upon thee as the protector of the vine, bless this portion of creation, which God has destined for man's use, and which he has deigned to make both the instrument of the deepest of his mysteries and the symbol of his love of mankind. St. Anastasius Martyr On the same 22nd of January, the Church honors the memory of the holy Persian monk Anastasius, who suffered martyrdom in the year 628. Chosros, having made himself master of Jerusalem, had carried with him into Persia the wood of the true cross, which was afterwards recovered by Heraclius. The sight of this holy wood excited the heart of Anastasius, who was then a pagan, the desire of knowing the religion of which it is the trophy. He renounced the Persian superstitions in order to become a Christian and a monk. This, together with the neophyte zeal, excited the pagans against him, and after enduring frightful tortures, the soldier of Christ was beheaded. His body was taken to Constantinople and thence to Rome, where it is still honored. Two celebrated churches of Rome, one in the city itself and the other outside the walls, are dedicated in common to St. Vincent and St. Anastasius, because these two great martyrs suffered on the same day of the year, though in different centuries. This is the motive of the churches uniting their two feasts in the one. Let us pray to this new champion of the faith that he intercede for us to the Savior whose cross was so dear to him. We add the short lesson upon St. Anastasius, which occurs immediately after those of St. Vincent. Anastasius, a Persian by birth, had embraced the monastic life during the reign of Heraclius. After visiting the holy places in Jerusalem, he courageously endured at Caesarea in Palestine, both imprisonment and scourgings for the faith of Christ. Not long after, the Persians put him to several kinds of torture for the same reason. King Chosros at last ordered him to be beheaded together with 70 other Christians. His relics were at first carried to Jerusalem to the monastery where he had professed the monastic life. Afterwards, they were translated to Rome and were deposited in the monastery near the Salvian waters. Let us now address ourselves to both these holy martyrs using the prayer of their feast. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. They despise the life of the world and attain to the rewards of the kingdom and wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye just, and glory, all ye right of heart. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our earnest prayers, that we, who are sensible of the guilt of our crimes, may be delivered therefrom by the prayers of the blessed martyrs Vincent and Anastasius. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.